Thank you. Thank you very kind. Much appreciative. Thank you, Mr. Cushman. Fellow engineers, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is National Engineers Week. And I'm honored to be speaking on behalf of the National Academy of Engineering and our nation's professional engineering societies. I am and ever will be uh, a White Sox pocket protector nerdy engineer. <laughs> Born under the second law of thermodynamics, seeped in the steam tables, in love with free body diagrams, transformed by Laplace and propelled by compressible flow. As an engineer, I take a substantial amount of pride in the accomplishments of my profession. Dr. William Wolf, president of the National Academy of Engineering, has said, science is about what is, engineering is about what can be. The Greek letter eta, in lowercase, often shows up in engineering documents. Engineers pay a uh, good bit of attention to ADA and improving ADA because it is a symbol for efficiency. Do an equivalent or a better job with less weight, less power, less time, or less cost. Engineers' entire existence is dedicated to doing things better and more efficiently. When knowledge or facts or solutions are sought, there are a number of techniques available from which to select. They can be ranked according to their effectiveness, from the most certain to the most uncertain. At the top, level one is measurement. But even excellent measurements can be subject to small amounts of error. Level two I call cause and effect. That's a rigorous deduction based on the laws of nature, the conservation of mass and and energy and, and momentum and uh, Newtonian mechanics and Ohm's law and Charles' law and all those kinds of relationships. Now, these, these techniques uh, for solving problems are not error free, but they do prov provide reliable and repeatable results. At the third level, I put correlation studies. These are statistical techniques which allow the drawing of general and reasonable conclusions, but imprecise conclusions. Example of this is uh, when you hear a conclusion that 62 percent of the people who eat pistachio ice cream 20 or more times a week tend to gain weight. <laughs> The fourth level is opinion sampling. Conclusions here can be useful, but they're often temperable and not repeatable. And five, six, seven, and eight are a whole variety of techniques that uh, vary from uh, focus groups to intuition to uh, dream analysis and just plain guessing. Uncertainty increases with the number of independent variables. So engineers use measurements and cause and effect methods for problem so solutions as much as possible and use correlation studies only when the number of independent variables is too great for explicit solutions. Engineering is a profession which leaves its imprint on our society in countless ways. We all intuitively understand the quality of life, but we have difficulty in attempting to define it. 
Each individual has a unique group of factors which are important to him or her in quality of life. One person might think having no obligation to work or whatever would be ideal, while another person would think having a great deal of work to do would be ideal. We do know that a century ago, the world really needed improvements in quality of life, health, mobility, and living standards. At that time, life was a constant struggle. There were epidemics of tuberculosis. Child labor, 12-hour workdays were used to ensure economic output. The average life expectancy had barely budged in a thousand years. If you reach senior citizen status, you beat the odds. To have all your children reach adulthood was rare. Waterborne diseases like typhoid fever and cholera were scourges around the globe. Industries blanketed cities with soot. Streets were filled with garbage and sewage. The world's forests were being decimated by a, by a fuel burgeoning industry and to build and heat homes for the world's growing population. The 20th was a century often punctuated with the terror of war and darkened with societal struggles to overcome injustice. But the 20th was also the first century in which technology enabled the tenets and the images of those traumas to reach across the world and touch people in ways that were previously unimagined. John Pierce, the engineer who fathered Telstar, the first satellite to relay television across the Atlantic, said that engineering helped create a world in which no injustice could be hidden. Engineers are dedicated to solving problems and creating new, useful, efficient things. So should not the world admire and respect them? Answer, only occasionally. <laughs> Many of our fellow citizens are mistrustful of logic and critical of technocrats, and often with reason. Bridges uh, fail and airplanes crash and storage tanks leak and radiation escapes and automobiles are recalled. And such failures are widely reported and the search for who's to blame is initiated. There are a couple of problems here. Engineers are not good communicators. We are mistrusted because we are perceived as being slaves to technology. Technocrats don't care a whit about the environment or safety or human values. I reject those criticisms. Uh, in my experience, engineers really aren't bad folks. Uh, a little too focused, maybe too intense for some. But they are caring and concerned as other segments of our society. The fact that their failures are so widely reported is evidence of their rarity. Now here in this final year of this 20th century, many will look back to see how we have changed and what we have accomplished. By measuring our successes and our failures, they will gauge the progress that we have made as individuals and as a society. The evolution of popular culture, politics, and business has given us a world that is vastly different than that of our grandparents. Engineering played a significant role in those changes, and so we decided we would take a focused look 
at how engineering has changed the quality of life in this past century. Over the past year, a rather impressive consortium of professional engineering societies representing nearly every engineering discipline has given its time, its resources, and attention to a nationwide effort to identify and to communicate the ways that engineering has affected our lives. Engineering is the second largest profession in the United States behind teaching. And so a large group of minds was looking at this issue. Each organization independently polled its membership to find out what individual engineers believed to be the greatest achievements in their respective fields. This effort covered such areas so diverse as uh, agricultural engineering, chemical engineering, electrical, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, and so on. Now, because these professional societies are unrelated to each other, the American Society of Engineering Societies and the National Academy of Engineering provided the work to coordinate the effort. The Academy in particular took a leadership role in this effort because its unique ability to convene the world's greatest engineering minds under the congressional charter that they share with the National Academy of Science. It was the National Academy of Engineering that issued the call for nominations to the societies, convened a selection committee of top engineers from all fields, and set about the laborious practice of qualifying and quantifying the information in the nominations. I was pleased to be asked to serve on the selection committee, which was was chaired so capably by Guy Stever here uh, at the head table. After several rounds of narrowing the nominations, the committee met for two full days uh, toward the end of last year and debated about just how to tackle this task and determine which engineering achievements of the 20th century had the greatest positive effect on mankind. While intercontinental ballistic missiles and laser-guided bombs were undoubtedly technological marvels with important and perhaps justifiable reasons for their existence, projects of this type were somewhat disadvantaged on a quality-of-life basis. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was committed elsewhere and unable to participate in that final meeting and the final round of selection, so uh, I'll ask uh, Bill Wolf to help me uh, handle complaints and corrections in that, uh, in that arena. Engineers should and, and often do present their projects, their ideas, and their conclusions with both the strengths and the weaknesses in full view. And I feel an obligation to maintain that tradition. A popular 14th century uh, phrase was, comparisons are odious. Shakespeare and Swift and Fortescue used that phrase. And perhaps they are. Nevertheless, we are, in contemporary society, engulfed in comparisons and ratings and lists. Top 25 teams, MVPs, Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, top 10, winning, top 10 money winners, uh, New York Times uh, book list, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we engineers were not going to be left out. Such lists are uh, candidly somewhat self-serving, and this one certainly is. Uh, comparisons could not use uh, measurements and found it difficult 
to use cause and effect or correlation studies, so we were obliged to reach way down to level four, opinion sampling, to reach consensus. And although this was an uncomfortable process for engineers, they did aggregate a committee of exceptional breadth and experience, considered seriously the recommendations of the nominators, uh, who were very well informed and experienced engineers in their respective fields, and sifted. And Bill Wolf can help report on that process. Now, as we take a look at the things that were considered by the National Academy of Engineering, we will see that if any, of, any one of them were removed, our world would be a very different and less hospitable place. Each one of these achievements has been important to the change in our society. Now, if you were asking a person on the street to name a great engineering achievement, uh, here she might say oh, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge or uh, Panama Canal or the Empire State Building. Um, and while each of those is a great engineering achievement, uh, none of them made the list. What did make the list were technologies that have become inextricable parts of the fabric of our lives. Some spectacular, some nearly invisible, but all critically important. So let me introduce you to the list. Uh, the 20 engineering achievements that had the greatest positive impact on society in the 20th century. At number 20, we have high performance materials. Early in the century, the first synthetic resins were developed and plastics have become ubiquitous worldwide. In the second half of the century, polymers, composites, and ceramic materials found extensive applications. Number 19 is nuclear technology. Controversial in the public mind, the engineering achievements related to conflict deterrence, power generation, and medical diagnostics and treatment remain among the most important of the 20th century. At number 18 are lasers and fiber optics. Lasers brought xerographic printers, uh, barcode readers, transformed survey methods, revolutionized storage of music, data, and images. And when the laser is combined with optical fiber, information flow rate was dramatically increased. Tonight, three engineers who were key players in the development of optical fibers will receive the Charles Stark Draper Prize. Number 17, petroleum technology. Transportation became petroleum-based in the 20th century. To much of the energy business and the chemical business as well was petroleum-based. Next, health technologies, which include such devices as pacemakers, artificial limbs, eye, eye lens implants, and so on and so on. 15 is household appliances which radically reduced the drudgery and time requirements for maintaining a home. Next, imaging technologies, like those used for medical diagnostics, weather forecasting, and ultrasound scans. Next was the internet, which to the surprise of many made it only to number 13. Was the consensus of the committee that the impact of the internet will be felt more significant in the 21st century? Check later. <laughs> I believe that spaceflight was certainly one of and perhaps the greatest engineering achievement, but it was selected number 12 on the basis of its effect on the quality of life. And I do not disagree. While the impact of seeing our planet from afar has an overpowering effect on people around the Earth and provided the technology for tens of thousands of new products, 
other nominees were judged to have a greater impact on worldwide living standards. Next was the interstate highway system. With 44,000 miles of limited access, multiple lane roads without one stop sign or stop lights, it's a model of efficiency, an engineer's dream. While it clearly improves the lives of all who travel on it and are, all who are served by it, it suffers because it is not worldwide. Moving on to the top 10, we have air conditioning and refrigeration, which have provided improvements in comfort and health, the ability to transport and extend the shelf life of food, and to make tropical locations livable and productive. Next, the telephone. Instantaneous worldwide communications serving both family and business needs, and it introduced telemarketing to the dinner hour. <laughs> when the founder of IBM, Tom Watson, uh, in, during World War II was predicted as, it was said to predict that the world market for computers would be about five, he slightly underestimated the number of machines and applications for these devices which reached number eight on our list. The world's population grew from 1.6 billion to 6 billion souls during this past century. That could have not been possible without number seven, agricultural mechanization. More impressive is the fact that the part of the population necessary to feed the world has been reduced from slightly more than half to just a few percent. One step higher is radio and television. Although Marconi first demonstrated radio in 1895, he broadcast the first transoceanic signal in 1901, sufficient justification for the committee to include radio on their list. Some countries first introduced television to enable their citizenry to watch the P Apollo program achievements as they happened. Now it's difficult to find a place on the, on the entire globe that's unburdened with daytime television. <laughs> In the fifth position, electronics. From vacuum tubes to transistors to integrated circuits to microcircuitry. I'm told the transistorized radio in mid-century was the fastest retail, fastest selling retail item of all time, at least up until the time of Pokemon. <laughs> Fourth are the technologies that purify and deliver safe and abundant water. At the outset of the century, in the United States, typhoid alone killed more than 150 of each 100,000 citizens. Water treatment and distribution techniques led to longer lives and better living standards around the globe. The airplane was ranked third. From its birth in 1903, with no obvious import use, aircraft rapidly changed the character of warfare, found dozens of new uses, and in the latter half of the century, decimated passenger competition in trains and ships. Second ranked engineering contributor is the automobile. It too was a 19th century invention, but its development in the 20th century demanded that it be considered a competitor. Passenger cars and trucks have become the major transporter of people and cargo around the world. It's expanded the ease, the practicality, and affordability of short to medium range trans travel enormously. Now, at this point, if we were in the entertainment world, we would have drum rolls and fanfares and rockets, but as engineers, we are not so inclined. Well, maybe a few rockets. But the winner, the top, rated engineering improvement 
to the life of earthlings in this century was electrification. The majority of the top 20 achievements would not have been possible without electricity. Electrification changed the country's economic development and gave rural population the same opportunities and amenities as people in the cities. Electricity provides the power for small appliances in the home, for computers and control rooms that route power and telecommunications, for the machinery that produces capital goods and consumer products. If anything shines as an example of how engineering has changed the world during the 20th century, it is clearly the power that we use in our homes and businesses. So there you have it, the top 20. Um, my descriptions have been sometimes trite, and it's likely that I missed some of the most important societal contributions from the nominees. And without question, I did not even mention the work from those nominations that did not make the top 20 list, that in many cases were of enormous importance to certain sectors of society or certain parts of the world. And in all honesty, I am guilty of a bit of subterfuge. Certainly the nominations were worthy. Certainly the committee was honest and diligent in evaluating those candidates, and certainly you have been given their well-reasoned conclusions. The subterfuge is that my purpose was not to promote the competitive nature of the event or congratulate the winner or to convince you that electrification was the most important technical activity of this past century. All of you have your own opinions on the importance of various technical developments to our society. What I really hoped to do was shamelessly use this occasion to remind you of the breadth and the depth and the importance of engineering as a whole to human existence, human progress, and human happiness. There is perhaps even more far-reaching consequences of this exercise. The likelihood of today marking the end of creative engineering is nil. The future's a bit foggy, but it's not unreasonable to suggest that the 21st century will enjoy a rate of progress not unlike the 20th. And 2000 may be viewed a century hence is quite a primitive period in human history. It's something to hope for. For three decades, I've enjoyed the work and friendship of Arthur Clarke, prolific science and science fiction writer, who in, like in 1947 first suggested the possibility of the communication satellite. In addition to writing some wonderful books, he has also proposed a few memorable laws. Clark's second law seems particularly apt today, which is any sufficiently developed technology is indistinguishable from magic. <laughs> it has been a magical century.